In this video, we'll take an inside look into the basic engineering of driving this infantry fighting vehicle. Interestingly, if you make this steering yoke turn left, this helps in increasing the speed on the right sprockets, which helps in turning the vehicle left instead of right. As an infantry fighting vehicle, we need to move the turret using the Cadillac switch to fire the Bushmaster chain gun, or the tow tube launched optically tracked wireless guided missile. And finally, we'll explore the basic price comparisons between various infantry fighting vehicles. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. Let's take a basic look at this vehicle before we delve into the finer details of how it works. The Bradley fighting vehicle can be divided into several parts by stripping its layer of metal surface. Opening this lid, you can see the engine located on this side of the vehicle. But wait, let's strip the other layers of this vehicle to get a more in-depth view. Here is the driver's seat, and as you can see, the driver is almost squeezed close to the engine. Just behind the driver sit the gunner and the commander's seat, all set and ready to operate and fire this Bushmaster chain gun. Depending on variants, it can seat around four infantry soldiers as shown in these visualizations. However, the US Marines and Army can rearrange depending on the mission by removing the tube launch missiles and add another seating area to make space for six heavily armed soldiers. In short, if we visualize from the top angle, this is how it looks. It can carry a total of nine crew and soldiers combined, which is pretty impressive for a small infantry fighting vehicle. Design work began in 1963 based on the M113 armored personnel carrier. Essentially, they integrated a faster engine and a turret to upgrade this little personnel carrier, along with adding the tow anti-tank launcher. In 1981, it was renamed the Bradley Fighting Vehicle from its prototype designation XM2. Furthermore, inside the turret, it features a new fire and control command platform, a great improvement from its previous generations. When it comes to heritage and generations, you can uncover your own long lost family history. We've partnered with MyHeritage to help you build your family tree. Just like we're doing here, you can add your great grandmother. Upload a photo and that's it. MyHeritage boasts over 20 billion historical documents. For example, you can research your great-grandfather's historical birth records from the 1800s to the present day and explore many other fascinating details. Check out this cool feature called Instant Discovery. Simply input the name you're interested in and find your perfect match. Click yes if you think this is the right person and discover new members to add to your tree. There's also a smart match notification located on the left. Just a simple click and you can find a possible distant relative in Australia. Just review your match and take a sneak peek into their family tree, and if it's all good, you can save it for possible connections. Another amazing feature is the built-in photo section, which turns your old black and white pictures into high-quality color images. Upload your old photos and voila, you get an enhanced image. But there's even more. You can animate your old great-grandmother's group photos and watch my heritage work its magic. When you're done, you can download and send it to your near and dear ones. I was able to discover family members that I didn't even know existed. My Heritage has partnered with us to offer a 14-day free trial with the link in the description below. Let's start from the top. This is the Commander 360-degree independent thermal viewer and targeting system. Inside the Bradley, this prominent protrusion serves as the primary psych extension, ensuring both the Commander and the Gunner maintain synchronization. Moving to the side, we find the Commander Display Unit. This constitutes the commander control system. It can track targets with the panoramic 360-degree sights and mimics the movement as demonstrated in the animation. Utilizing the panoramic sight, the commander conducts target searches and transmits data to the gunner. In case of gunner injury or malfunctions, the commander retains the capability to override the turret at will, seizing control from the gunner's seat when necessary. In summary, the commander possesses the ability to maneuver the turret conduct target searches, and engage the gun. All this is can be achieved through the commander control handle. By activating the fast turret switch, he can adjust the turret's orientation left or right. This is the result when looking from outside the infantry fighting vehicle. When ready, he can fire the coaxial machine gun by squeezing the trigger switch located here. This is a secondary weapon that is mounted parallel to a vehicle's main weapon, sharing the same axis. As you can see, the movement is in relation to the Bushmaster main weapon. But depending on the situation, the commander can also operate the machine gun independently to neutralize any infantry enemy. This is the gunner's sight, remaining stationary as it moves along with the turret. 
And this has a direct relation to this gunner targeting sight, almost similar to what the commander uses to track target. Just below the gunner sight is the controller, which is commonly referred to as the gunner Cadillac. Specifically, the two black handles serve as the controls. The smaller red switch above is, naturally, the trigger. Pressing this switch with both safeties disabled results in activating the 25mm Bushmaster chain gun with a rate of fire of 200 rounds per minute. With an effective range of 3,000 to a maximum of 6,000 meters. Additionally, it's worth noting that if the gunner is injured, they can utilize a set of switches on one side of the Cadillac. When this large switch is pressed and held, it enables the gunner to manipulate the turret, similar to the animation demonstrated here. It also has the capability to elevate and depress the gun tube when both switches are pressed and rotated. This is how it appears when viewed from outside the tank. If the gunner releases that switch, the gun will cease movement. Let's take a look at the process of firing the gun. The gunner first tracks the target using the traverse button, targeting system, and laser range finder, then fires a sensing shot if the target is stationary. If it connects, they then proceed to fire a burst of three or four rounds. The Bradley gun was meant to disable soft skin target, but until recently, this gun was reported to disable a T-90 main battle tank as shown here. Now let's delve into the operation of the tube launch optically tracked wire guided system. Step one, activate this switch here and pull up this lever. Step two, this action rotates the tube launch system. Here, you'll observe the twin tow missile launcher raised into the firing position. The plate covering the front of the launcher falls due to gravity when the device is raised. Step 3. Using the provided symbology system, align the crosshair with the target. Step 4. Squeeze the trigger and the missile fires. However, it's essential to maintain the crosshair on the moving vehicle to facilitate data transmission through the optical wire, ensuring the missile reaches its intended target and not try to fly the missile. However, it has its disadvantages. In the heat of battle, one crew member needs to unload and reload these missiles. This tow missile is a re-engineered BGM-71 anti-tank missile that has been in service since the 1970s. Let's take a look at its basic parts. It consists of a launch tube. At the top is the targeting acquisition system supported by a tripod and a traversing unit. This is the battery-powered source required to operate the targeting computer. And finally, we have the coil connection that helps the gunner guides its target. The gunner tracks the target with the crosshairs on center mass, but the missile automatically flies 2.25 meters above the line of sight. When the missile senses that it is directly above the target by means of the target's shape and magnetic field, it automatically fires its warhead and destroys its target. This missile has a fragmentation warhead that weighs seven pounds, around 3.2 kilograms, and has the ability to penetrate up to 200 millimeters of double reinforced concrete. These are the smoke grenades located at the front. They are ejected at a certain height above the vehicle and explode to create a smoke screen intended for the infantry soldiers or a hasty retreat. Moving to the back, there are the radio antennas and communication systems. At the rear, there is a door that opens at a 90 degree angle. This unusually large door is for bringing luggage and large equipments needed for transport. However, the six infantry soldiers can enter either through the small ram access door, which is a few inches thick. Alternatively, in some cases, they can also unfold the whole door, which is better suited for fast entry or exit, provided they have fire cover. This gives the Bradley a total of around six entry and exit points. The driver at the front and two on top of the turret for the commander and gunner, and the other three are located at the back. Moving to the sides are the armor plates. Let's remove these plates one by one and you'll find an idler wheel, along with six road wheels and most importantly, a sprocket wheel. Let's take a closer look at how these components function. Power comes from this eight-cylinder diesel engine, which produces 600 horsepower. These pistons move accordingly to generate power, which is then transferred to this gear. This gear in turn is connected to the general electric transmission system. Removing the cover, you'll see the basic process of the gears turning. All this energy is transferred to this section of the Bradley. Now let's remove this cover to get a clear picture of how this system operates. As you can see following the arrows, this is how the transmission works directly powering the sprocket wheels and moving the vehicle forward. This is the overall result when all the gears work together, powering the sprockets and turning the wheels. Now that we have understood the mechanism, 
Let's learn to drive this vehicle. This is the accelerator. Just beside it is the brake pedal. On top is the steering yoke and the red switch is the driver's intercom communication with the commander. Just like a car and has a handbrake and a gear selector. You can start from neutral, put it into the drive selection located here or put it in reverse if the commander needs to back up. Here's how it works. The driver turns the vehicle by moving the steering and stepping on the accelerator. To turn left, the driver turns the steering to the left, which increases the speed on the right sprockets and tracks, resulting in the Bradley IFV turning left. To turn the vehicle to the right, the driver turns the steering to the right, increasing the speed on the left sprockets and tracks, which helps turn the Bradley to the right. Removing the engine cover, this is the mechanism where the steering is connected to this transmission gear, which has a direct relation to the speed of the right or left sprockets. This infantry fighting vehicle boasts a length of 6.55 meters, equivalent to roughly 21 feet, while the Bradley's width measures approximately 3.6 meters with a height of 2.98 meters. Let's visualize this size by comparing it to a person alongside the German Puma and the Russian BMP3. The Russian IFV was intentionally crafted with a lower profile compared to our Western infantry fighting vehicle, all at a cost of around $1 million. In contrast, the latest German Puma comes with an astronomical price tag of around $18 million, largely due to its advanced technology upgrades. The Bradley comes in at a cost of around $4 million. Moving on, we have the Israeli Namr fighting vehicle, which is priced at approximately $3 million. Adjacent to the BMP is the French amphibious AMX-10P, valued at $2.2 million, standing notably tall in comparison. Now let's take a look at the Chinese IFV, which bears some external resemblance to the BMP-3, priced at around $1.5 million. Lastly, we have the British Warrior IFV, priced at around $2.8 million, which for some reason appears bigger among all the other infantry fighting vehicle. Don't forget to check out my heritage and get that 14-day free trial to discover your own family tree and plus you would be helping out our channel to help us produce more videos like these. So please click the link below.